Hello and welcome to Cosmic Crit. I'm Rebecca, here to introduce the next installment of Attack of the Swarm. But first, I have a very exciting announcement for any fellow Pathfinder or Pirate fans out there. You may or may not know that since last summer, we've been recording a second podcast for our Patreon fans. It's called Dead Men Roll No Crits, and honestly, we're having so much fun with it that we couldn't keep it to ourselves any longer. We are now releasing the episodes week by week to the public. On Dead Men Roll No Crits, we're playing the old Pathfinder adventure path, Skull and Shackles, which Patrick is converting to the Pathfinder 2nd Edition game system. Patrick is taking me, Tyler, Jabert, and Seth on an exciting seafaring adventure, and it's been an absolute blast. Pirates plus Pathfinder can't lose. You can subscribe to Dead Men Roll No Crits on all the major podcasting platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. The first seven episodes are now available, and we hope you'll give it a listen. Okay, back to Starfinder. Please enjoy this episode of Cosmic Crit, episode 183, Starport Starport Troopers. Troopers. Episode commencing in 3, 2... One. Episode initiated. Hey, listen! It's time to quest from Kokoriki Forest to an evil fortress all the while learning melodies to play on this week's episode of The Cosmic Legend of Zelda and Ocarina of Crit. This is your GM Patrick here, a.k.a. your Ganon Master Sword, and I am slashing grasses and smashing pots this week along with my my friends and fellow f- uh, fairy players to my right. Uh, this chic dresser packs a powerful princess punch. It's Rebecca rolling with Zinnia. Hello. Across from her, this Deku scrub uh, will shoot it out at you from across the map. It's Drew delivering Echo 7. Hey, listen. Uh, to my right, this uh, Goron so tough that he eats and rolls rocks for breakfast. Siler Dredge Am Tavasho. I like minerals for breakfast. Uh, across from him, this bug isn't afraid to crawl inside a big fish's stomach and slash at it from the inside. Jibber playing with trust. Hey. And across the digital table, if you attack this tiny plant, a hundred chickens will descend upon you in force. It's Miles mixing up with sprouts. Good evening. Guys, welcome back to Cosmic. A crit. Hey. hey. A crit yeah. so cosmic. We went up to nearly 200 <laughs> episodes. <laughs> We're doing it. That went through, did you? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm off. I'm off my book now. I didn't write that part of the intro. No, it's uh, it, it's funny that this is this week's uh the game because Drew and I recently did Zelda Two for the Moya Nerd. Oh gosh, <laughs> Zelda Two. By by the time this episode uh will have come out, it probably would have been out last week. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe a little uh, further past than that. I don't know how far you guys are ahead, but uh, last month, if this is still April, <laughs> you did a Monster March as well as. Yes, we did. Here on the podcast, we had a, a fan submission challenge for that as well. Uh, don't know when that monster is going to be coming up. Maybe this season, maybe next. But uh, <laughs> uh, I want to thank everyone that's submitted. Yeah, I think it's time to get back into it. You guys haven't had a an honest shoot them, slash them up fight here on the podcast for a number of episodes. Do you want to get back to the invasion of Susculin? I yeah. was born to invade yeah. Susculin. <laughs> I was born invading Susculin from my mother's egg I, yeah, I, really I, I guess like an egg. Wow, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's o for two buddy <laughs> I, I, I don't know about sheeran that much <laughs> rebecca just looks <laughs> thoroughly disgusted <laughs> an egg uh well before we do let's uh oh what i, I don't even remember what happened last time on cosmic crit sprouts marlow the longest pronkin starship combat ever <laughs> yep that's about it um it's all that needs to be said about last week i was wondering if that was all you were gonna say <laughs> i wasn't lying well it's so <laughs> it's so funny um you know i talked about you know uh changing up starship combat or you know potentially skipping it but i felt like this one should be you know spoiler warning it, it is the last one for the adventure path uh i feel like we should give this one some special you know 
wait because it is you guys like getting back to to Susquehann. So we we tried out some some new rules and if I had my druthers, maybe we'd divide that up into a couple episodes and, and not play. Well, and to be fair, you asked us what route we wanted to take, and we we voted on that route. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I mean, so, some I mean, people, it, it some people voted on that through. route. Well, Don't you, lump me in with you, noob. I mean, <laughs> you guys get basically uh, if you if we do in the future the single. Um, Everyone gets their own single smaller ship, uh, which is a rules in the starship operations manual. Um, y- you get the kind of the same experience that I get as the the GM, which is I get to completely move around sometimes two ships, you know, two or three ships in a starship combat and, and do all the the roles for them. So I um, want to give you that experience and, you know, like I said, I wanted to bring back some of these NPCs that you've you've met along the way. Um, let's get back into this week's episode, though, as you have cleared the first line of defense from the swarm around Susquehann. And now you guys uh, have have uh, left your your smaller ships and have boarded your descent vessel, the third doctrine. And we watch as it soars through the clouds above the capital city of Brenoa. And you guys see maybe some similar ships breaking off, uh, SCF forces landing amid smaller ships and, and breaking off from the, the larger collection that's going to the spaceport to different strategic locations throughout the area around Brenoa. Big ships like the Third Doctrine, though, need to land in the spaceport. There's there's not enough you know open area elsewhere or safe ground. Uh, but yeah, this is where it is thought the fighting is going to be fiercest because a lot of the swarm will, at this point, know that you're coming. Um, as you as you're waiting here along with some other troops, stress you you're getting empathic waves of fear. You know, rolling off the young men and women inside the the ship, um, as well as from. Your young, your child inside the safety of its jar at your waist, um, maybe responding indeed to the the fear like yourself coming from the other SDF soldiers in the the drop ship. The last time you felt this kind of energy, um, this kind of like psychic empathic energy is indeed when you're leaving Susquehann. But yeah, since then you've grown like eight levels <laughs> and your psychic powers, your visions of, of um, kind of like the, you get when you used to shake people's hands. Now you're just getting coming to you left and right uh, as you're able to kind of figure out what, um, uh, what people are feeling around you. Uh, it, it's almost like their spirit energy is hanging like a, a fog yeah, um, among the, the drop ship here. Uh, Vasho, you've you see a number of uh, fairly novice looking soldiers in the dropship, but among them you spot some familiar faces from the evacuation of Susquehann. Folks you know fought back when the, the planet was being um, evacuated. Uh, so you know some of them have seen the destruction caused by the swarm firsthand. Among them you see Lieutenant Gorham, who, who now has a an eye patch. And is commanding three squads, you know, going over holographic maps of, of spaceports, um, the the exterior of the, the spaceport, and uh, he'll give you a you know a salute, and a, a hand wave. Quick question: mm-hmm. Is hip is his eye patch on the same or opposite eye of my eye patch? Oh, you guys are eye patch buddies. So same eye. Yeah, but okay, you know, so I, I can't. I can't. Hopefully, take. I can't take his eye and be blind. Okay. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, Devasho would obviously <laughs> do a little eye patch pointing. Give him a salute. <laughs> We're both too lazy to get artificial eyes. <laughs> lazy like, or lazy or broke, Patrick. As lazy as I, or broke. <laughs> it's like uh, putting off. You know, just going to the eye doctor, but it's a little more severe because you just have <laughs> one eye. Yeah, it's it, uh, star. The the penalties for being one eyed in Starfinder versus 
first edition Pathfinder are <laughs> very, very different. <laughs> it's really, unless you're putting points into perception, only having one eye means very little. So surprisingly, death perception, not important. Um, all of a sudden, you guys get some uh, a call from from the ship's captain over over comms who says all units we are getting some light resistance from the ground uh, our shields are holding uh, we are touching down and, and t-minus 60 seconds all teams prepare for debarkation uh, you guys indeed have time if you'd like to prep anything get some spells out the way or, or say some cool one-liners um, <laughs> before the, the hatch opens and you're you're fighting on the ground once again. Is there anything you guys would like to do? Um, so we are just moments away from the uh, from the doors opening and us stepping out onto some concourse. Uh, oh, yeah. Is it, is it is it clear if we look out the windows? Uh, is there, are there like swarm all around? Not, not too many windows on on spacecraft. So I imagine if you're in the the loading bay here, you get maybe like a little peak of light from the um, the single hatch here. But, uh, um, I mean, I guess I'll throw a battle mind link lesser upon our two operatives and, uh, perhaps a Defrax hardiness on our Solarian. Ooh. Sling and spells. That's right. I'm just, just sort of boosting them up. Uh, I'll, and then I'll pop a mind of three on myself. Ooh. And um, I'll hold off on shield other. That got a little dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot how this works. Uh, anybody else? Any any cool things to say before you charge out of the third doctrine? Come on, you sons of pronks. You want to live forever? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Actually, that sounds pretty good. Sign me up for immortality. <laughs> Wait, that was an option? <laughs> Wait. I would just love to see some... Uh, Lieutenant, some, Lieutenant Echo, are you saying that you have yeah. unlocked the secret of immortality, <laughs> but instead... I believe I may have misread a scene. I was under the impression that it was a historical significance... As if in a history book, you might find our names, ranks, personalities, likes, dislikes, etc. Oh, that doesn't sound very good. But uh, some people are like, yeah, let's die <laughs> and be remembered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So as you guys uh, feel the ship landing, there's, you know, like a lurch as the um, you're, you're pulled from artificial gravity to actual Susculan gravity and as the main hatch of the starship is opened up air races inside the the ship and you can hear the sounds of gunfire ringing out across the spaceport and as you disembark you see other units from the SCF in various uh, uh, spaceport locales engaging with the the swarm troops as they rush forward firing from from the cover of their ships there are massive holes from ordnance blasts in the, the tarmac here, as well as the a, a few, you know, scorched kind of wreckage from starships that weren't able to make it off the planet when the God Hosts division landed and took Brunoa. But yeah, let me let me take us to the map, show you your fellow soldier units. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, very funny, Patrick. Oh, they look familiar based on the movie quote that I just threw out there. <laughs> it's just the cover of Starship Troopers. And there should be, I think, one more because you guys put six units into the Brenoan Starports. Yeah. Memory well, serves. They're all expendable. So put a few more out there. Sure. <laughs> well, yeah, they're, they're large groups of... Uh, I, I do technically have stats for um, for the soldiers. They're level two, so probably not going to be like a, a, a huge help to you guys if you like call <laughs> over like yeah. Lieutenant Gore. I mean, like I don't want you. I don't want you. I don't know what you want me to do here. I didn't <laughs> uh, fight inside the yeah. mindscape. That's called a thresher, Lord. Go get it. Go get it, soldiers. <laughs> Say what now? 
It's only a thresher, Lord. If, if we send thousands of you, it will tire itself out and die. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, uh, yeah, like level two, like maybe a few hundred would be able to take one down, like level two. Imagine yourselves at level two fighting a, a like a level ten yeah. creature. You just have to roll those twenties, you know. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> <It's literally laughs> how often do they crit? Because the the Thresher Lord's hitting on on a two, so and and killing him probably in one hand. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's also like Thresher Lord can only kill like three per turn. It's just got those three mm-hmm. attacks. That's it. Yeah. I know it's 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 you know what, let's just do let's just roll this combat out real quick no, yeah. <laughs> yes this scenario that we've concocted um, oh. I did not have the the stats for a soldier um saved in my notes here but yeah C, CR2 or, or like level 2 uh KAC of 15 so <laughs> uh I think a thresher lord would indeed have to roll a one to miss and uh, thirty HP, so it's, it's you know they can they can take a beating, mm. not from a thresher swarm thresher lord, but you know no some no. other swarm creatures. No, I don't even think. I mean, heck, even um, I don't think Alindra's minimum damage is thirty. I think Alindra would one shot them. Oh no, I think she would too. Anyway, uh, you guys are out on the tarmac here and kind of you know watching things from afar it looks like most of the swarm components that you're seeing here are indeed the smaller dredgers perhaps some vorfoma flying overhead and for the most part these units are are taking them on holding them back um so long as they're staying in formation you know firing as a troop as per the troop rules they're doing they're doing like a ton of damage to these these smaller components. Uh, let's see. I'll, I'll describe the map a little bit. In front of the the tarmac here, there is uh, mostly unmarred space leading towards some buildings in the the center of the spaceport. Uh, behind you, you see maybe a team of technicians that are, are carefully trying to unload your your vehicles. A couple of vehicles, hover buggies, and from a distance. Uh, there's a, a ranged acid blast that hits the side of the third doctrine, but it's a, a shot too small to not be, you know, it's like deflected partially by the shields and doesn't do enough damage to mar the, the hole. But the one of the technicians says, you know, if you help clear the tarmac, we'll, we'll get your vehicle straightened away. Uh, you look over, you see none other than uh, Phil Hessner, the motor pool private who's now a, a sergeant giving the, the friendly suggestion. Uh, uh, he's all the way back from episode zero of this season, if you recall. Giving, giving you guys some some good banter on the back of a vehicle heading to to your, your new camp. Does, does Phil have a picture of his kids still? He's, he's got several more kids now. <laughs> nice. Good job, <laughs> Phil. Uh, over comms, you, you get a... a a message from one of the starships still hovering overhead, a Susculan whip, like the ones that you guys got in book three. This one's called the Liberator's Fist, and it's having trouble landing in the next pad over and is requesting help, uh, clearing out some enemies. Are you guys game to move forward and engage? I'm down to Nene. Let's well, knock and load. Everyone, roll initiative, and if we've got oh boy a couple of battle mind linked operatives, that means one you get a plus two to your initial roll, and two you guys are using whatever is the higher of the dice. Come which on I'm gonna, I'm just gonna guess. It's gonna gonna make oof. Oh, I was about to say it's gonna make the operatives roll first, but they just said, you know what, Jabert, you just wasted a spell because. <laughs> Roll the five and a seven. Yikes. Uh, that that will still put you... Uh, both of you at 23? Does that sound right? No. I would be at 23. Two. I'd be at 20, I think. 21, I think, Come Miles. On, yeah. yeah, you're right. And, and I'm a five. Um, would you guys mind typing in your initiatives in the turn order as I get, get it ready? As you see, firing up as you move forward, uh, firing up at this Susculan whip, a, a host of Korovoxes 
the the mean bipedal humanoid swarm that you remember you've you fought back here on Susclin. But these ones, oh, they look meaner. They look tougher than the ones you uh, you engaged with as you escaped from the planet. And as you move towards this large group, a few of them break off in your direction. Engage you five. Uh, and here are what these guys look like. Reveal on the map. Mm-hmm. Oof. Uh-oh. These, well, they look friendly. Uh, Lord. These guys are called a uh, gorilla. Um, G-U-E-R. Uh, go- gorilla fighter style core foxes. All right, let me Don't roll them. I need to see that. that that's, that's... Ain't no one got time for that. Uh, I'm going to roll them into the initiative turn order and... Um, Oh, they have a chance to go first. Pretty good chance. Let me roll it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Patrick's rolled an 18. Patrick's going first. All right. The little barriers here on the the north and south side of the tarmac are is just a few feet tall. Um, If you're standing behind it, you can get uh, partial cover. And if you're prone behind it, you would have full cover. A couple of them are going to move behind that cover and take a shot. We're, we're going to take a couple shots. Let's see here. Well, all the shots. Go, oh, no, wait, I, I rolled an eight and a nine. Uh, a couple shots go into Tress, a couple to Devasho. As it should be. Yeah, well, I was about to say, oh, this is all going to Devasho, but no. Uh, their, their acid cannons just getting ranged attack from afar. Oh, actually, uh, they're 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 not super smart. They're gonna they're gonna make some full attacks. I'm a huge target. It makes sense. Let's fish for the crits. So these are at a minus four. <laughs> if you roll anything like you did last Tuesday, <laughs> I'm gonna cry underneath my desk permanently. Rolling tons of twenties in our Patreon was, game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, sorry. Do they move into cover? Uh, one of them did, but oh, he's still making a full attack somehow. Oh, these guys. Um, two of them are, are going to kind of stay at distance and make these attacks. Do I have a range for their, their attack? Mm, no. Okay. Uh, so four attacks versus trust. Bow, 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 bow. Uh, probably a couple of hits here. What is your... EAC. 30. Uh, no. Someone's, someone's got beefed up a little bit. Yay. My highest here was a 16, which means I probably need to roll a little bit higher for a Devash. Oh, boy. We're about, we're the same. I'm, I'm just 31. Uh, yep, yep. So they are at range spitting acid cannons in your directions. Uh, but the the high rate of fire doesn't seem to be doing them well. Uh, that is going to bring us to Zinnia, who is next. All right, Zinnia is, uh, let's see, should have been measuring. None of these have been acted upon yet, right? So I get to choose whatever target I want. Um, yeah. I am going to go for the one that is, I'm going to fly up in the air a little bit. <clears throat> Just so I'm above Devasho's head <laughs> and mm-hmm. have a clear shot. Um, and I'm going to shoot at the one that is directly in front of us, uh, but a, a distance away. Got it. And these are swarm. Oh, actually, before I do that, can I try to identify them? I know what the name is because you told us, but does oh, it yes. Yeah. I mean, these are technically new swarm components. So you make a new roll on them. All right. That is a 43 to identify. 43, one, two, th- uh, three things you get to know about them. All right. Do they have any special attacks? Ooh, attacks? Uh, you know that indeed, uh, if these are based on the base Korovox creatures, they have a mental shatter uh, supernatural ability called Psychic Assault with a range of 30 feet. Okay. Just blast psychic damage at you. All right. I'm definitely going to relay that to my friends. Um, 
Do they have any resistances or immunities? Only swarm immunities, uh, or not swarm immunities, um, uh, acid and, and fear effect immunities. So what one that normal swarm get? Okay. Um, and uh, what's their EAC? 21. 21. All right. That's what Zinnia wants to know. And um, for free, you get to know that these guys are um, chaotic, evil, monstrous, humanoid creatures, indeed called Gorvox gorillas. All right. Um, <clears throat> make an attack. With that, she's going to make an attack. I get a plus one because of my hive jack to this uh, attack. Mm hmm. That's a, tw- a 17 or lower on the trick oh, and yeah. a 27 on the attack. So I think both of those will go off. Trick and hit. All right. So that does a total of 28 damage. All right. Marking it down on this one directly ahead of you. Uh, oh, and also it's flat footed. And I will mark that with the traditional symbol as we move on to Sprouts Marlow Battle Mind Link right next in the turn order okay so the the one to the northeast of me the one that's kind of uh around this this corner is that is he are they undercover or yep so it's like a, a low kind of like sound wall um okay so covering up you know maybe up to their chest or so so like from a, where like a place to or so yeah where from where you guys are standing just um giving them a little bit of of uh AC bonus. You said it was plus two. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take that shot. Spr- Sprouts uh, is is not an entirely certain seeing seeing the numbers that he wants to go forward <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, just yet. Uh, so he's going to take a shot at at the, the the most northern one and see how this goes. This one behind cover. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. CR seven. Or lower. Uh, tricked and 21 to hit. Uh, are you making it a flat footed? Mm hmm. Uh, ooh, against KAC, that's gonna be a mess. Mm. Four on the dice, not gonna do it. Um, so indeed, you take a huge chunk out of this stone wall here. And oh, maybe that one's got a new target. We'll see. Echo seven, you are next. Uh, Echo is going to follow uh, Sprouts's example and aim for the same one. Ooh. But he's gonna he's gonna get down and try to do some heavy fire. Should also try to hit him too. <laughs> you should roll <laughs> higher than a four. It's just a suggestion. You don't need to take it. Gosh, that trick I got. Ooh. That's a twenty-five to hit. Ooh, hey, a seven on the dice for forty uh, points of damage against EAC. Definitely a hit, even with a bonus. Thirty-five points of damage. Plah, this one. The, you, you've drilled a larger hole through the wall. Well, this, this, one should, the, this should it. be uh, 40 with uh, the the heavy fire bonus. 40 with the heavy fire bonus. Uh, okay. Yeah, that one's, that one's extremely hurt um, from a single blast as we move on to Trest. Hmm. Don't you just love being the non range character here? <laughs> you get to, you just get to run into this crowd of, of, uh, big old beefy looking core boxes. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Echo seems to be just fine at hitting that thing. Um, I'm going to cast. This seems like a dumb idea, actually. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, I'm going to cast a spell upon uh, Sprouts' weapon. Whoa. Um, uh, seeking shot. Uh, so your next shot will uh, just make any sorts of twists and turns possible, and it will find its way to your target. Uh, <laughs> so you just ignore concealment, and so or cover or anything like that. So Ooh. as long as there's a possible line of effect, it'll zip around. Uh, yeah, and then I'll I guess make a move, and I'll do, 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 move forward. Excellent. Uh, Davasho. Basically, Miles, he's like, stop missing all the time. <laughs> what mean, your Bert really said. I, I, I would love to. Stop it. If you had had that on your, your weapon, that last one probably would have been a... <laughs> Maybe. Uh, okay. What you got, Tyler? 
I'm going to spend a resolve point to open up a wormhole behind your line of defenses, walk through it, and stab your guy in the back. Oh my goodness, there's got to be some kind of range um, uh, on this ability, right? <laughs> uh, 100 feet plus 10 feet per Solarian level. Do you think I got that? <laughs> uh, did I mention you're starting back behind everyone about <laughs> 70 feet or so? Uh, oh no, that's that's way too much. So they, guess what? Neither the Swarm nor Patrick was expecting this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a standard action. Uh, I have to spend a resolve point, so I will do so. Okay. And then yeah. I will You're do a Zenith Revelation. These. So I'm going to create a wormhole uh, here and here. I'm just going to draw. I, I'm so glad I chose red, which is the same <laughs> color as the grid lines. <laughs> I apologize to all my players for being absolutely idiotic. And then as a move oh. action... So this is, walk a worm, right through it. this is a wormhole that they can, your teammates can walk through as well, right? That is, uh, I guess I can read this out real quick. We, we've not used this before. Uh, right? Yeah, I can create two linked wormholes as a standard action. One wormhole must be adjacent to me. The other may be anywhere within line of sight. Uh, each wormhole is uh, five feet across and appears in an intersection between two squares. You and any large or smaller creatures you mentally designate can travel between the wormholes. <laughs> Entering a wormhole instantly teleports a creature to a square adjacent to the other location where the creature can continue its movement. It will remain in place for one round for every two Solarian levels you have. Uh, it's only five foot wide, which means you have to like hilariously like uh, squeak <laughs> like through like my a, own wormhole, like an elephant. <laughs> yeah, uh, going through like a normal sized door. Yeah, got to put one leg through first, and then like another <laughs> leg through, and got to suck uh, in the gut. Like, oh, here we go! Uh, Solarian powers this. were made for large creatures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that is turn oh, one. Um, you got a swift action as well. Swift action, no. I do not. Why are you interrupting me, Tyler? Huh? What you got? Well, you got I, for it? well I just feel bad because I, I, I feel bad that Jabert moved up and then I put a wormhole. Yeah, you feel right bad where that he, you could have told me that before I moved. <laughs> sorry, I didn't. I, I heard you move, but I was looking at the wormhole thing and I didn't think. Sorry, Devasha would have told Trest, but Tyler forgot about Jabert. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you use your book reroll, I'll allow you to take uh, that movement back uh, for, <laughs> for for Tress. How about that? I'm, I'm such a nice guy. I forgot. I got to reset the old uh, book rerolls. Well, yeah, that's all I got. You know what? I'm just going to give give myself uh, an extra one. You know, I did a pretty good job last book. I feel like I earned it. Yeah, but, why not? Okay. This very much sounds like a boss giving himself a raise because he feels like he did a great job. You know what? I, I deserve one of those too. I've never gotten a raise here on the podcast. <laughs> Sounds like something I I should get. Okay. These guys are really beefy, but Patrick's got to roll higher than a 16 on a lot of these attacks. Um, their, their, their whole, well, didn't get this one, but they do indeed have a, a number of bonuses here with a special ability called Nimbo, Nimble Salvo. That allows them to move half their speed and, and still make a full attack uh, before, after, or, you know, during its attacks. Um, but I don't want to attack twice anymore after missing eight shots. So let's just... Hmm, this one's going to attack either way. So these two are going to shoot at... I guess I'm going to do the same thing, but just single attack. So a couple at Devasho. Hmm. And actually... I think this one is going to take a shot at Xenia, who's now up in the air by herself. And this one's going to take a shot at Trest. So let's do that in reverse order. Uh, Trest first, single shot. Ooh, just a seven on the dice. That is a miss against EAC. Xenia. Oh, boy. One on the dice. Definitely a miss versus EAC. And a couple of blasts against Tyler, Tyler, if you want, you can make an attack of opportunity against this first one. Yeah, why not? Right in front of you. I have no reason not to. Oh, oh please roll. Does a 32 hit? Uh, yes. Oh, 36 boy. points of take that damage. Am I going to be able to hit with these guys at all tonight? Your, your EAC is 31. That is correct. Oh, by EAC? Yeah. Uh, let me just double check. No, my, oh, no, my KAC was 31. Oops. What's your EAC? 
27. 27? Okay. Let's wait. Well, it's a very different. Let's go back and do a whole bunch of damage against Devon. Sorry. <laughs> I misunderstood. When did uh when did Tress I forgot that Tress spent money on uh better better armor. Oh yeah, I got that uh got that Riddishell Superior. Yeah, so I for, I I forgot that your your EAC is so much better than mine now. Yours is indeed thirty, though, Tress. Uh, yeah, I've got a thirty on EAC and thirty-one on KAC. So my KAC is just one better than EAC. Uh, last round, I got a um, a single hit on the Vasha. On this one, these two tens, uh, these are two hits. So. It's a bunch of acid damage. It's an acid party. Not the damage acid damage. Coming at you. I'm going to do this all at once, but if you have any resistances, obviously these will apply gotcha. separately. I do not. Right, and you're taking a bunch all at once. It will seem like, uh, oh, not, not too high. 57 points of acid damage from the, the cannon blasts. And okay. uh, these guys are going to move backwards a little bit. How much is half their movement? Okay, 20 feet. Mm-hmm. They're going to move back kind of behind cover with their their teammates here. So about 25 feet or so away from this portal that you've opened up into the netherverse as we go back to Zinnia. Um, Zinnia is going to... Hold on. I'm tra- Now that everyone's moved, who has taken <laughs> damage? Which ones have been hit? before i mean uh, i i attacked this one i know yeah this one uh to the south here you attacked and to the north the uh this one was attacked i don't know why i put flat foot on it it's not flat foot this one was hit by echo okay but those are the only two so far uh okay. well uh Devasa just hit the other one to the north so both of the ones to the north have, have taken some some damage Got it. Okay. I was hoping to focus fire, but it sounds like it's kind of a wide swath of, of targets right now. Um, okay. Zinnia is just going to keep on shooting at the one that she was shooting before. Uh, try to keep that flat footed up on it. And um, I'm up like, I imagine like 20 feet in the air. So I presume that there's no cover, right? Because oh, I'm you, up above the barrier. Uh, you would presume wrong. <laughs> How? Uh, I mean, you'd have to be like over them to to make the the cover be negated. I mean, just thinking about the angles here, they're still about half their chest is is covered up. Uh, as you are over what fifty feet away, about sixty feet away. Okay. Um, all right. Well, in that case, um, I will move forward and mm, now shoot moving, it from there. Moving all the way forward there. Definitely going to negate some some cover, but now you're you're a, a, a target in the sky. I mean, uh, who who are we firing at? I don't know what my options are. I could, I mean, regardless, I'm going to be a target in the sky. Um, yeah, I'll just whatever. I don't care anymore. Um, she's going to shoot at the one that she was shooting before. So down here. Excellent. So 17 or lower on the trick, so it's tricked. Actually, 19 or lower. And uh, 36 on the attack. Tricked Corey. and hit. It's total of 30 damage. All right, a little bit more than last time. So it's still flat-footed. I will keep that marker on that one for you guys to to see as we go on to Sprouts Marlowe. All right, so uh, Sprouts is going to shoot the same, the same monster. All right, focus on fire with Echo Seven. Yeah, um, not flat-footed, but you you can negate its cover bonus because of Trest's sure shot, bending bullets, as it were. All right, so it's a CR fifteen. All right, that is a flat-footed trick. twenty-six to hit. That is yeah, that is going to be a hit. The thirty-six points of damage. Okay, now it's flat-footed for everyone. Uh, oh man, you did so much more damage last time. How much? 20, 36? Yeah. Okay. Let me do the math here. Uh, that one is bloodied. The one that you and Echo 7 have focus fired on. Awesome. As we move to Echo 7. Uh, Doc, this fire, it's so heavy. All right. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, he says he says uh, heavy and back to the future. It's a plot point. <laughs> same uh, same enemy. Okay. Natural Ooh. twenty. There we go. That's uh, what are we talking about? Shout out to a Patreon subscriber, and I think we we, we we're getting new Patreon subscribers all the time and i think i just got a new new one here new patreon subscriber uh brian m thanks for supporting us everyone that's at that ten dollar above the level right now feel free to send in more patreon um supporter shout outs whenever we roll crit we will give you a shout out on the podcast um drew how much well do you care about a card? I think this might be enough to do this one in. It would be 37 points of damage. So, uh, mm, well, and, and the, the critical, I mean, just, damages. just before the, the crit damage. So, uh, well, the critical damage, I'm looking at 50, 60 something. Yeah. That one's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Blam. We won't worry about a card this time. Uh, Oakley, Oakley. All right, focus fire. We are down to three of these gorillas left. Trest, on to you. All right, yeah, I think I can charge uh, one of these folks here in the back. Perhaps this one that has been uh, uh, oh, no. tricked up. Oh, uh, no. By, by our friend Zinnia. So you're moving to the flat footed one on the south side? Yes. I'm going to charge and slice the big old sword. Uh, 32. Oh, that's a what? I don't understand this. On my, on my screen, it looks like you rolled three sixes. I know. I, I, I'm saying I that too. Uh, roll 20 just like goofed up a little bit. Still yeah, a lot it's, of damage. <laughs> but I, think, I think it just sort of makes things up when you're rolling more than one die. <laughs> <laughs> that is a hit and for 34 points of 34, damage. 34, yeah. Uh, oh, my friend, the calculator is coming out to play tonight, but I, I can tell you the very least that one is bloodied oh yes all right and that's my turn very much so all right Devasho, bottom of the turn order you've stepped through the portal and now everyone's run away from this giant teleporting drops as you would if i if i pulled those shenanigans on you you are muted sir all right well i would move i you're right i would move away from any teleporting creature um, so I'm going to go to Photon Attunement, move over to the uh, other group of enemies. Oh, there's just one left over there. <laughs> it's it's yeah. the one that you trick into, or uh, AOO'd. Oh, nice. Well, then let's try to finish the job. Uh, w- Wabanga. Does uh, 24 at KAC? Time, time for that book reroll? No, that's a hit. <laughs> okay, 34 points of damage. Ouch. Uh, all right, so mix in with your 36 that you did last time. I don't need a calculator. I could do that math. He's bloodied. Yay. And I feel accomplished. We're back to your turn, I guess. It's going to, this one that's on top of you is going to try and claw the heck out of you. Let's do some claw attack. Uh, let's just do one claw attack against Gaze. <laughs> oh, it was almost a 20 on the dice. Eight is going to be a miss. And ooh, these two on the south side, I think, will do a single attack, a claw attack against Trest as well. Mm-hmm. Natural 20. Yay, 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 yay. Uh, on the dice. Uh, shout out to. Oh, we got another shout out going. Uh, let's sh- shout out our friend uh, Casper who's been a, a long time supporter on the Patreon um, we have permission to reuse their uh, roll a d20 and ask the, or uh, roll a d6 and ask the person how they're doing uh, it's been a while since we've actually rolled it though uh, Miles how are you doing <laughs> I'm pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I somehow knew that was happening. How about the uh, King Kong versus Godzilla? Huh? I loved it. I'm not talking you about could, Godzilla uh, you versus can, King can, Kong, just King Kong versus. Oh, the 1962 Godzilla. film. Yeah, how about it? All right. Um, it's 
a wild movie. It was originally supposed to be King Kong versus Frankenstein, which is why there's some weird electric stuff in that movie. Um, and probably one of the worst gorilla suits you will ever see on film. I'm sorry, versus Frankenstein? <laughs> yes. Uh, Toho <laughs> went on to do two Frankenstein kaiju movies, Frankenstein Conquers the World and War of the Gargantuans. The gar- Frankenstein's yeah. only like six feet tall, right? <laughs> yes. Well, hey, he's, King he's Kong like was back here. Like, he's pretty big for a dude, but like... <laughs> King Kong was only uh, 15 meters originally, but hey, he got beefed up. He got super sucked. Yeah, um, Toho had this this real thing for Frankenstein. And in fact, I think German versions, uh, Dr. Frankenstein was often used as the name for some of the scientists. But they, um, I haven't seen War of the Gargantuans in a very, very long time. And I don't know if I ever saw Frankenstein Conquers the World. It, but they, the, the, the quote unquote Frankensteins in that movie uh i think they they dropped that plot thread like technically but they yes. look like cr- creepy japanese cavemen. demon cavemen yeah, yeah. oh boy yeah. uh yeah they're, they're 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 not uh awesome looking uh <laughs> even, even as a fan of japanese kaiju movies it's uh the movies themselves are okay but like the, they're they're not the 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 most attractive monsters all right, I've put this off long enough. Let me roll some damage here for this crit on. Oh, we're not talking to me anymore. Sorry, we we heard your opinion of the movie. Oh, I was putting way too much damage on this. Okay, rolling the damage. Fifty-three points of damage as this one goes bananas. <laughs> this gorilla gorilla <laughs> attacks. Trest and just scrapes through the armor and, and gets to the the chitin underneath. Uh, you can make an attack of opportunity on that one though, uh, Trest, as it will uh, actually. It's going to move to one side of you, and the other one's going to move to to flank on its turn. Uh, so, so I can make an attack of opportunity. Uh, yes. Okay. Place them up. Uh, actually, let me check a thing. Okay. Whoop. Got 28. Oh, that's a hit. Uh-oh. Wow, uh, that's 37. A Cha. A lot of damage. Let me do the math here. Oh, no. That Col- one's dead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, he laid down his life so his buddy can take two shots at Zinnia in the air. <laughs> Acid <laughs> shots. <laughs> what is your EAC, Rebecca? It is... Oh, gosh. 27. I rolled a 12 and a 14. Uh, just one of these is a hit, unfortunately. Oh, Patrick getting greedy again. Uh, but it is 3d6 plus 10 acid. 18 points of acid damage. And that is their turn as we're back to you, Rebecca. All right. Hold on. I have to do math. Uh, I've, I've been there. <laughs> math, 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 math. Oh, that's not math. that's not distracting at all. Um, I'm sorry, right. <laughs> everyone. Math, 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 math. Um, all right, she is going to take a shot at the other one. Oh, the one that just hit her. You know uh, that okay. is um, targeting, or I guess not targeting trust, but next to trust. Oh yeah, this one's not been hit yet, so I could use a a tricking, a tricking in. <laughs> So CR 19 or lower on the trick and a 20 on the attack, which is not going to be enough. No. Well, it's flat footed. Does that matter? Because the trick goes off. Uh, Oh, you know what? The trick does go off in this. I think that's why I marked it on the other one before for for sprouts, even though it didn't hit. But right. Well, so so they only become they only become flat footed to other people if you hit. Yes. But if you make the trick, then they're flat footed for the purposes of this attack. Right. So with flat footed, a 20 should hit, right? Against KAC, no, but EAC, yes. Right. And this is EAC. Yay. Huzzah. Anytime you hit on a three, it feels good. <laughs> yeah. So that's 34 damage in all. Uh, okay. That is the first damage this one has taken. I've marked it flat footed as we go on to Sprouts. So Sprout is going to pop forward a little bit. So that way he gets a good look. Ooh, getting off of your steed. Yeah, getting getting out of I don't, cover. Go I don't through the wormhole. Go through the wormhole. I'm just kidding. 
Yeah, yeah actually, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could pop out behind the box. So he, yeah. so so Sprouts does a double somersault dive through the wormhole. <laughs> yeah, and then completely sticks the landing on the other side, like you do. Very cool. And actually, got a straight uh, shot at the one that is still attacking Trest. And so I am mm-hmm. Sprouts is going to take that shot. You know what? Because he came through the wormhole, uh, add uh, plus two cool points to this attack. It does nothing to the dice roll or the damage, but it it just looks it, good when you it do it. It makes it look cool. Yeah, you're just popping yeah. through. You're you're you know, on listeners, your, your debauch, to debauch, you're like on your left, and then you come through yeah. blast and pow, pow, pow. yeah, it, envision. Listeners, if you will, the coolest thing you can possibly think of that whoa. a 16-inch plant would do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's just plus two cool points, okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 that's all you need. That's Those all you all need. Cool, that's all the cool points. When you do this cool of a plant, two points is all you need. Uh, uh, to see our eight or lower. Yeah, tricked. Uh, yeah. 26 to hit. Oh. Uh, so is 41 points of damage. Okay. Whoa. All right. It is flatty-footed. Oh, he's... Well, he was already before, but he's bloody now. Uh, after oh, that, if he's already, I, I have other, I have other options. Hold on, mm-hmm. um, you could do yield uh, bleed damage. I am make him off target. Oh wait, they're they're just using claws, aren't they? Uh, yeah, I'll just make him off target. <laughs> All right, I will mark that on him as well as we go to Echo Seven. Back to you, Drew. You know, Echo's over here by himself. <laughs> I guess he's keeping the other the other squad's company. Just uh, you know, yeah, focus fire. We're going to do these things. <laughs> Imagine your legs just kind of tripod out when you go into heavy fire mode, and you're like, "Oh, I gotta pick up these legs and move through." <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just gonna I'm gonna fire from here, guys. Thanks. I'm a range yeah, character. I'm, I'm good. We're going to heavy fire one more time. And let's see, which one are we all focusing on right now? Yeah, we'll do that. One to the south is flat footed. Yeah, let's hit that one. 31 to hit. That is a hit. Or 26 points of damage. Ooh, it's not dead yet. Oh, you needed another crit on that one to do it. But uh, right behind you is Trest, who's on top of this guy as well. He's looking really haggard here. Genium. Oh boy. Well then let's just let's just go ahead and get greedy with it. <laughs> Make <laughs> no, two no, decks. No, 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 no. Thank you, no, Tyler. No, 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 no. You're getting greedy with it. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Oh no! No! Oh. Natural one. Oh, Good I... thing I got greedy with it. Yeah. Will Smith is not the mascot of the podcast. <laughs> Will Smith, lend me your strength. Uh, now these guys. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, 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 wow. dude. Good lord! Oh jeez, oh, Louise. Well, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> get greedy didn't help this time, but usually it does. There's usually a, a difference between the dice rolls. I mean, there technically was a difference. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> cosmic crit <laughs> fan fumbles or the official Paizo deck. Um, I mean, are these guys really significant enemies here? I mean, uh, let's say, let's say cosmic crit. I don't want to see what the fans, what the f- fans have cooked up. Yeah. For us. What do the fans think about more this brutal. fail? Almost for always. A, uh, not this time. Probably. Oh, actually, it could be pretty bad. Uh, submit by. Longtime fan uh, Rabbit uh, probably sprained it. Uh, what body part was holding the weapon suddenly spasms? Can you roll me a D4, Jabert? A three. Uh, pfft, this almost has no effect on you know, on the magic folks because you can just get it right back fairly easily. Uh, you drop your weapon. Ah. Oh, yeah, so it just it just disappears. Okay, got it. Thank goodness. I was yeah. I was thinking that was going to be like some drain or some damage, and I was going to have to spend a level four spell to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was at first, but yeah, there's just uh, there's stamina damage for another one of these rolls, minus Wait. two to your next melee attack for one of them. This is probably actually the most severe of all yeah. four. I mean, I mean, I'm not armed for this for the until my turn. So there's that. that is, got that going for you. That's true. Um, Oh, this guy could is probably going to live to his next turn now. 
thanks for allowing that. Uh, Devasha, we're on to you. You've got a bloodied one in front of you as well. Is it, is it double attack time? You know what I kind of want to do? Since these guys are weak enough, we could probably, this is probably the only time we could make it happen. I want Devasha, I want uh, Echo 7 to ready an action on the other side of the wormhole, and then I want to throw the enemy through the wormhole to have Echo 7 punch him as he comes out the other side. <laughs> And like this excellent bull rush wombo combo of uh, ultimate <laughs> ponage, but I'll just punch him. I think that's uh, a finisher for an Apex Legends character. You're throwing yeah. someone through a, oh, yeah. a, a portal. Yeah. Oh, I guess I, I'm, I'm willing to do to that, move. Tyler. If you want to do that, one day, one day, not well, this day. You, you can, you know do non-lethal and just little, uh, throw the uh, <laughs> unconscious body through. Oh no, that's that's so insulting. Just a single attack? No, 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 these are doubles. Oh, okay. So first one is a hit if you've got your negatives installed. I do oh. have my negatives. Oh, second one's a hit too. And that one's yeah. unconscious. So Yay! <laughs> you can do with the corpse what you want as we go back to <laughs> this one's dark turn and it will we'll see you are defenseless trust so i mean I've st- i'm still in your armor so you are you know. completely <laughs> defenseless that good yeah you're right <laughs> or actually it, it, perhaps it sees indeed you are heavily armored uh it will let out its psychic assault attack on you I need you to make me a will saving throw oh you foolish fool my greatest defense Oh, where are these ones and twos now? I know, seriously. I was, I was hoping I was going to roll one for that. All right, this is this is pretty minimal damage. It's ninety four. Uh, we're taking only ten, no, nine points of it. Okay, as it will move back <laughs> uh, away from you, and that will bring us to Zinnia. Right, Zinnia is going to shoot it. It seems wise. It's worked in the past. It shall work. 19 or lower on the trick and a 31 on the attack. Oh, yep. That is enough to blast this one out of existence. Please. It was making a run for the portal. <laughs> it looks like, <laughs> but it is now dead and we are out of combat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wall shot. I would have loved to have seen get through the portal. <laughs> just come out next to Sprout. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's sad is they would have just walked right through it and <laughs> Echo would have just shot him point blank. <laughs> oh, right, because it has to be your out, like, yeah. allies you designate. Uh, yeah. 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 So I might have the range I, to do a, an attack of opportunity melee with it. But oh, I never got go. to learn. I never got to learn. Uh, in, the, in the next um, landing strip, uh, you see the rest of the core of oxes. They're more gorillas that kind of scatter out to the edges of the the spaceport. You can throw some parting shots their way, but the the Susculan whip you know radios down and says, "You know, excellent work. Uh, is that Midnight Squad? Thanks so much. You, we're we're gonna blast the rest of them back into cover, but this bird can land now. Uh, Okie dokie. I think that's pipe. what I think that's five, what you say. Bye bye. Over the the radio, um, maybe like a minute later, there's you know some more battling going on around you, but you guys can um, collect your thoughts here as as no more will will kind of enter the the center of the the landing pads, the center of the spaceport. Uh, you, you will get a, a comms notice from high above in space monitoring. Um, in the command center aboard the Dreadnought, uh, Commander Najiri will call you uh, and say, Midnight Squad, tr- trust. If, if you all are, are ready, we believe we have some larger swarm components trapped inside the customs area. If you're able to, to take them on now, they won't have time to, to heal their wounds. That is this building here to the the west that uh, it looks fairly dilapidated. There's maybe some like big old bullet holes and an ordnance blast in it. But uh, for the most part, it's still standing. All the walls are still up. Um, if if everyone else is in good shape, uh, I say we just uh, run forward. Let's go. Sounds good. Do it. Clack, click, clack, click, clack. Inside, walking inside, you see the tables in this main area here have been smashed 
There are jagged shards of transparent aluminum dividers that now litter the floor. <clears throat> There's a holographic sign above the the west or, or the eastern exit where you, you enter that reads two landing pads 01 through 03 and another one that kind of flickers between the messages that says welcome to Brenoa and then critical error reboot required. Uh, the debris here is in, in this entire area is going to be difficult terrain, but uh, th- none of the, the furniture is really solid. There's there's not any like cover you could pull here. Um, but as you're moving forward back into the building, indeed, you can hear perhaps the, the chittering, the brain of some larger swarm components from deeper inside. Um, is there anything you would like to do to to prep as you move forward? What's what's your guys's march in order? Um, um, well, question. How close to the swarm are we? Um, you know, in the same building, but maybe at this point, 30, 40 feet away. Well, if I'm within 30 feet of them with the hijack, I can listen to swarm uh, communications. Do you want to stealth ahead? Yeah, sure. Uh, in a similar vein, uh, I want for Sprouts to uh, glimpse the truth because that's at a range of 60 feet. <laughs> You're just eagle eyeing everything. Yes. Uh, Sprouts. I uh, want to know exactly who's what, where, and why. That one might take a little while. Remind me about that. Let me get to... Sure. So, Glimpse the Truth, by picking up on solid crew clues and hidden traces in your immediate surroundings, you can see things as they really are. As a full action, you can spend one resolve point to gain the effects of true seeing for one round with a range of 60 feet. And then I also have Detective Insight. Mm. Um, at the 11th level, your incredible insights help you move uh, investigations forward where mundane inquiries fail. Once per day, you can spend one resolve point and take 10 minutes pondering a mystery or quandary to gain oh, yeah. an enigmatic insight as if you cast divination. <laughs> that one, you, you basically have God thoughts. <laughs> so yeah, which, whichever one is going gonna, is gonna to pull off what I need to do. <laughs> Uh, well, first, let me get to back to Zinnia and Zinnia. There's there's another part of of Hive Jacks. I think we should do is this the it's the first time in some time you've had it on. that You've gone within a swarm mind within range. Uh, can you make me a will save? Have I had it on for a week at this point? Yeah, you had it. You, you started with the mindscape, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. a week has passed. OK. So will save, right? Yep. Okay. The twenty-five. Oh, much more fun if 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 you start like turning evil swarm. Uh, this is um, it. Only does get more difficult from here each day. It's uh, DC ten plus your hive jacks mark, I believe. So mark two is what you have, and then yep. plus one for each uh, saving throw. So you have to roll one for a while before this can potentially affect you, but you get within uh, you're, you're pretty sure 30 feet. You can hear the chittering and perhaps uh, feel and, and can understand some, some basic, very basic swarm kind of language skills getting shared psychically as well as emotions between what seems like a couple of larger swarm creatures at the same time this is happening from the shadows emerge out of the darkness sporting visible wounds some some creatures indeed we've seen before oh it's a it's a giant swarm thresher lord who comes forward and is like a to be continued (laughs) (laughs) that was the least expected to be continued I think we've ever had to be be continued (laughs) wasn't expecting that voice. <laughs> That's what they sound like. <laughs> Sorry if, I, if I'm breaking your expectations, Tyler. <laughs> Team Storm Squad. <laughs> I, I know, it's that. It it's that, and it kind of reminds me of um, a high pitched version of Toby Department from Gravity Falls. <laughs> <laughs> What are you guys doing in here? Oh my! Oh no! Who, oh. That was um, the uh, the the rolling nose alien, right? From oh yeah, uh, season two. 
Wow, what are you guys doing? Yeah, it's true. That was that was that was Toby. Uh, the, so uh, I, I I'll go over this again next week. But for each additional units that you put on the storming of the spaceport, uh, and you guys have one, uh, the, these swarm thresher lords have a little bit of damage to start this combat off. Uh, and indeed, you see them sporting some some wounds from the advanced squads that that settle down here. Apparently, a couple of these CR two <laughs> SDF blokes landed some critical hits. <laughs> so, <laughs> great job, gang! Yeah, uh, that that'll do it for for this week. Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm taking these slowly these episodes because each one there's going to be. I don't know. By the the end of this book, you might be sick of fighting swarm creatures. There's a lot in in book five, believe it or not. (laughs) But uh, this is a a classic and and one that you've not had a a basic stand up fight against since the end of book three, these Thresher Lords. So I'm excited. Uh, But that'll be next time on Cosmic Crit. Uh, Guys, thanks for playing with me. Thank Thank you. you, Thank Thank you. Listeners, thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Good day. Bye. You've been listening to Cosmic Crit, an officially licensed partner of Paizo Incorporated. The Starfinder role-playing game and adventure paths are trademarks of Paizo. All Pathfinder and Starfinder images are property of Paizo and are used with permission.